In this video, we're going to talk about making photographs from your own experience. This is a great way to not only make your images stand out from the crowd, but also to bring home unique images that speak to you. Welcome back to the channel everyone, this is Dylan Golby. Today we'll actually be filming the episode on the Fujifilm X100V, since my regular filming lens, the 16-55mm f2.8, is actually in the shop for repairs. So let me know how this looks and I'll let you guys know uh, about my experience with filming with it at the end of this video. As you can see, I've got a picture of the Taj Mahal on the screen here, and the reason for that is the images we'll be talking about today are actually from a trip that I took to India in 2019. Now, for me, I travel several times a year. I'm never usually in one place for a full sort of 18 months at a time. So this has been quite strange for me. Uh, and I've really been enjoying going back over some of my old images and just putting together new collections and reliving a few of those experiences. So I thought that we'd talk about a few uh, images from that trip in this video. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the video is actually going to be about making images from your own experience and how that can sort of help you to create unique images and also images that really speak to you. So just by way of example, uh, for anyone who's familiar with my work from Korea, you'll know that I basically shoot two sides of Korea. And one of those is the traditional beauty, the old houses, the palaces, things like that. And the other side is the gritty back streets. Now, Korea is quite famous around the world for its, you know, its K-pop, its, its massive gentrified cities and things like that. Now, personally, I have no love for that side of the country, so it doesn't really show up in my images. It's not to say that there's not value in it and there's not people who shoot it really, really well, but since I don't really feel it, there's no real reason for me to try and force photography that doesn't really mean anything to me. I'll just end up with sort of a, a cheap uh, view on things that somebody else could really have done a better job of. So that, I guess, sums up the ideas that I'm going to be talking about in this video, and that is, if you don't like it, if you don't feel it, if you don't want to photograph it, don't photograph it. So on to India. As we know, India is an extremely busy, extremely populated place. Even small towns in India can outsize some big cities in other countries. So it's definitely a place where you're going to be a little bit overwhelmed with the scale of everything. However, in the several visits that I've made to India, the things that have really stood out to me while I was there were actually just the small moments in between. The things that individuals do to pass their time. Everybody on the planet has their own story, their own way of doing things, and their own life to live. And I find those to be really, really interesting, especially in a place like India where there's just so many people. First up, let's take a look at this simple image from my first day back in Delhi. Now, I'd been up in the mountains of Arunachal Pradesh, and my wife had just flown in to, to India, so this was actually her first day, and it was my first day back in the big city. So we decided to go out, just take it easy, and visit Chandni Chowk. Now, Chandni Chowk is a, a market area in old Delhi, and it's an extremely bustling, uh, busy place that just really does not stop. It's hot, it's loud, there's people everywhere. I do believe they've actually gentrified it a little bit now and it's become a walking street but during this time cars were still allowed down there and it was it was pretty chaotic so we decided that the best way to do our first little bit in this market was to do it the way the locals do and sit down for a cup of chai. So like in all parts of India, no matter how busy, no matter how dusty, no matter how loud, there is always a chai stall and there are always people finding their own time to just relax and have a little bit of me time before they interact with the world again. And so that is one of these places and we thought that we would try to experience the market that way so that we could just take it all in and decide how we felt about it. So as we sat there sipping our tea, I decided a couple of things in my mind. The first was that I couldn't really leave this area without getting a, a shot of the chaos, a shot of just the absolute mayhem that this place looks like from the outside. Now I'm sure these people who are working here and going back and forth delivering things have a system, they understand how it all works, but from an outsider's perspective it definitely looks like absolute chaos and I knew that I had to get a shot of that. But the other thing that I noticed is that in between all of that 
people were taking small breaks just like we were, and sitting down wherever they could for a cup of chai, and just sort of staring off into space. And I knew that I wanted to at least get a couple of people in my photos doing that to kind of represent the area as it was. Now this wasn't to say that that was all I was going to photograph. I'd find interesting things along the way, looking at a place, taking it in, understanding it a little bit, and then just tucking away a couple of ideas in the back of your head is a really great way to approach a place and make sure that you come out with photos that represent your own experience. So onto this photograph itself. Since I wanted to be able to isolate this man and just get him enjoying his cup of tea in his little moment, I decided to first use my aperture or my depth of field to be able to isolate him in the crowd. Now the GF 110mm f2 on the GFX does a really really good job of that, however that wouldn't quite be enough to be able to isolate him from the absolute chaos that was around him. There were people everywhere. So I decided that I would use a cart that was sitting next to him, there was some stacked up bags on top of that full of vegetables, and I used those, I moved in closer to them as you can see on the left hand side of the frame. I moved in closer to them and used them to basically obscure all the other things that were going on around him and just have him in his little world. In the end, those two techniques, being able to cover up part of the scene with other things in the scene and also use my depth of field to isolate, allowed me to get quite a wide frame while still showing that this man was sort of alone and taking some alone time in the crowds of just you know, blaring horns and dogs running around on the ground and people shouting orders at each other and all of that going on, but to still be able to show that he had a little bit of alone time, a little bit of solitude in that. The only real way to make photographs of your own experience is to actually have those experiences. And there are a lot of ways to, to travel. I mean, you know, if you're in Delhi, you can get into an auto rickshaw and speed through traffic, as long as there's not too much of it. And that's definitely a, a fun experience to have, the, the getting around the city in just a, a basically a lawnmower with a roof on it is, is a lot of fun. But I found that everywhere I go, the best experiences happen when you walk. And the best photographs often come from that as well. So. I like to get up really early in the morning and rather than taking the five minute taxi to the thing that I want to go and see, the big site that I'm here to have a look at, in this case Jama Masjid, I like to walk there. I like to take the extra time and so starting at 6am in Delhi when the stores are just starting to open and only really a few people are going about their days by Delhi standards. Uh, is, is a really great time to get out and just kind of enjoy uh, a place and you'll find that the interesting characters tend to be out at that time in the morning. And so, rather than taking the main streets as well, I like to take the back streets. And in this case, I think it's called Chori Bazaar, was the uh, the back streets that I like to take. It's a, uh, a series of market streets, again, um, that lead all the way across to the, to the mosque. The stores aren't all open, people aren't really, you know, yelling and screaming. It's only the casual buying that happens at that time of the morning, people coming to get a few little things here and there. There's no sort of auctions or anybody yelling across orders at each other or deliveries going on and things like that. So it's a really good time to kind of find a couple of people that might be interesting and make some photographs. So I was really lucky in a lot of ways with this photograph. Firstly, uh, to find these characters sitting there all looking off at something in the same direction. Second, uh, my lens, which at the time I was using the GFX 50R with the Mitocon 65mm f1.4, so that's around about a 50mm on uh, in full frame terms, uh, that was just wide enough to get this all in. So I stepped right back against the other side of the alley, and then I, I quickly focused and I made a couple of frames. The other thing that was quite lucky is that I was a bit excited about this and I didn't realize that by stopping the lens down to, I believe it was about f4 or f5.6, I had actually got my shutter speed down to about 1 25th of a second, which is really nothing you want to be ha uh, hand holding on a medium format camera with a lens that long. But I made two shots and thankfully both were in focus, and then the dog jumped down and went to explore something around the corner, and that was the end of my opportunity for that shot. So I have to thank Serendipity a lot for this image, I mean there is no way I could have planned to see that, it's not the sort of thing that you see every day, but I do have to also remember that I'm the one who decided to get up early and walk these back streets. And I find that those two activities always bring about the experiences and the photographs that I remember most uh, when I'm traveling or when I'm just going for a walk in the place that I live. 
For this last image, I want to talk a little bit about making sure that your viewers get the same sense, the same feelings that you had while you were making that image. So if I asked you to take a look at this image and tell me what time of day it was taken, who it was taken of, you could probably, within a ballpark, give me the answers to those questions. And that's because I've included those clues in the photograph itself. Now this shot was taken on that sort of obligatory sunrise boat trip that you take when you go to Varanasi. And honestly, it's one of the most touristy things that you could possibly do, but it is one of the best ways to see the city. So if you ever go there, don't avoid it. Spend a few dollars and go out and do it. It's really well and truly worth it. Since you're trapped on a boat with one person looking back at things from a distance, the experiences that you're going to have are going to be quite far away or with the boatman in front of you. And our boatman for this trip didn't have a lot of English. My Hindi is limited to being able to introduce me, myself by name, and his English wasn't that much better. So our communication was limited to things like, you know, body language and pointing at things and smiling, being good human beings, but not really being able to go any deeper than that. And I knew that I wanted to make a portrait of him, but I couldn't really say much about him. So I decided to kind of describe the experience that we had with him in the final photo. So of course, I made a few photos of the surroundings. You know, I made photos of people praying in the morning and uh, slapping laundry on the rocks as we, as we uh, rode past them. And then I turned my attention to this man and I made photos of, you know, the oars entering the water, the light hitting the, the water, that sort of morning uh, glow on the water there. And then I started to make a few photos of his hands as he was rowing. And those were all really good, but I wanted to get one shot that kind of encapsulated the whole experience. And being that I really wanted to make a portrait of him, a lot of my attention was focused on him and the, the details of him. And the one thing that I noticed was that as he looked away from the sun, the rising sun, it actually completely obscured his face in shadow. And that sort of talked a little bit about how I was feeling. I couldn't get to know this man. He was just sort of another man to me. He was almost faceless, if you will. And that was the missing link in the story that I wanted to tell. I wanted to be able to show you our experience rowing on the water, uh, seeing Varanasi in the background, and seeing the man who was rowing our boat. But I also wanted you to learn a little bit about him and, and the experience that we had together. So the final step in that puzzle, of course, was again using a bit of a shallow depth of field. And the reason for that is just so that you focus exactly on him and don't go looking for details in the background because it's not really important. It just gives a sense of place but doesn't necessarily add to the story if you can see every brick in the buildings. So these are just a few ways that I like to ensure that my experiences get translated in the photographs that I make. So I hope that they've given you some insight into how I approach photography, but also given you a little insight into what India was like for me. As always, I hope that this video has been helpful and a little bit entertaining. If it has, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up below. If you uh, haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing that as well. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Before we part ways, I promised in the beginning to talk a little bit about filming with the X100V, and I'd like to give you my thoughts here. Now, I actually tried to film this video twice, and the first time I tried doing it in 4K. Uh, a couple of weeks back, somebody asked me about the overheating issues with the X100V, and I'd only ever shot 1080p or stills with it, and so overheating had just never been an issue. But I did try to shoot this in 4K today, and it didn't work out all that well. After about 10 minutes, it overheated and shut itself down, and it was doing that every few minutes afterwards. So I couldn't just keep filming. I couldn't switch it back on and let it roll. It would just shut itself down again every couple of minutes. So I don't think it's the best 4K tool on the planet, but recording again in 1080p after I let everything cool down, I haven't had a single issue. I've been recording for about 45 minutes now. Uh, it does take me a while to do these videos. I'm not the best speaker on camera, as you can probably see from all the jump cuts. But otherwise, the video quality should be quite good. It's got the same sensor as the X-T4 and the X-T3, so that should be quite nice. And I'll see in a moment if the uh, autofocus has been working okay. I hope it's been good and it's not jumping all around and distracting you guys. So thanks again.